Okay, as promised, here is the second video for week six. And I'm going to show you how to take a research article and put it into a table. Um, so I had just sent you all an email, and um, what I did was this is the step by step critical appraisal of the evidence, part one. And within this, it walks you right through how to do a rapid critical appraisal. And what we are going to really look at is um, how to put this into a table. So in the last video, I just showed you, I showed you right here about the study evaluation table. Um, so this was a table you could use instead of the one that's available on the Johns Hopkins website. So this is a link to table there. And what I did was I took this um, table that came up and there it is right there, kind of off the screen for you guys, I think. All right, so this I made into a Word document so that you can go in here and modify it. And I also put the reference to that in there. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to take a study and we're going to put it, uh, look at it, and put, fill in the columns for this study. I chose a study that we had looked at earlier on um, in the course when, um, I think it was week one or week two. Um, so one thing I do with a lot of um, articles that I find is I store them in a database. Um, so I use EndNote. I'm going to pull this up here. Um, so you can see here in my EndNote, minimize it so you can see the whole thing again. Um, I have my, all my references in here. There's some groups. And um, the study I'm going to use today I filed in 508, and it's called the Dulce Wireless you want. So we will look at this study. And I actually have this um, article stored within EndNote. So I had just gone like this and um, found the study, imported it into EndNote, and then a right hand click and I put find full text and it attached it to here. So that's a topic for another video, but anyways we can look at the study here. So if we just look at the abstract here, um, so first of all, let's go back to the table. That's the first thing that they want us to put in the table. So the author in the year. So we're going to put the author in the year there. So the beauty of having this information in EndNote here is that I can highlight this study. Let's see. This is the study here. I can put my cursor on the document here. And then I can go, let's make sure you can see this. I can go to here and say insert citation. So I pop it in there. The author and the year goes there. And then the reference boom, is here, already put in there. So that's one of the great things about EndNote that you already have it there. So that, what's the next thing they want us to put in here? A conceptual framework. Let's see if this study has one. A lot of studies don't. Pull this over for you to see. So they're looking at a randomized control trial evaluating the impact of Project Dulce, short-term mobile technology and glycemic control. So let's fill in the columns that are the easiest to fill in first. So right here, if we read the abstract, we get the background, subjects and methods, result and conclusion. I'm not sure if we're going to find a conceptual framework there. So let's go to the next one, and we'll come back to them. So the design and methods. So we know um, right within the title here, it tells us it's a randomized control trial, right? That is there, and we can just go ahead and put that in our table. I 
it's a R C T. And then um, a lot of times you'll notice in the tables that people will put the abbreviations here. So R C T comma means randomized control trial. And then separate the next one. These are alphabetical under here, and then the, you separate them with a semicolon. So we've got the RCT sample in setting. Let's see what the next the sample in setting is. So subjects and methods: adults with type two diabetes. Um, we're assigned one of three groups. All right. So right here they don't tell us how many people. Well, they tell us the setting, but not the sample. So we scroll to the research design and methods. And we'll look through here. So I go to the results and I can see here it starts talking about how many participants were in the study. So we can see that they had the remaining 301 participants. So we got that. We'll pull up our table and type in 301 was our sample in the setting. Where was the setting? I know there was three groups. So we put three groups. And let's see what they say about the where this occurred. The setting is the where the study occurred. So I'm looking in the study design here. It said patients were identified as potential candidates by medical staff of the 81 medical offices. So there was 81 medical offices, and they were in Tijuana. Okay, so we can put that in our table. Okay, three groups, medical offices in Tijuana. Okay, the next one, major variable studied. So this is going to be our independent variable and the dependent variable. So the dependent variable, we remember, is the outcomes they were looking for. The independent variable was what the researcher um, manipulated or the intervention that was tested. So uh, if we go right to the abstract, that I think even in the title we could say evaluating the impact of Project Dulce, so that was the independent variable. Uh, Project Dulce in short-term mobile technology. So we're going to just copy that. That's our independent variable. Pop that into there. And the dependent variable, what did they say that was on hemoglobin A1C or on glycemic control? So they're going to see how does this project be and the mobile technology impact glycemic control. All right, so what did they use for measurements here? Okay. So without going into too much depth, we can see for the measurements, right, that they were measured hemoglobin A1c, and then they also measured diabetes knowledge. Okay, so that's probably uh, good enough for to enter into our table for now. Okay, so I put those two things in there, and then the data analysis. What were we supposed to put in the data analysis column? Let's see. Data analysis, so that's Put statistics used to answer clinical questions here. All right, let's see what we got for statistics. So unfortunately, in the abstract, they don't tell us the exact statistics. They just use the word significantly. So what, what did they define in the study as significant? So we can see here the P, and we'll get into this in uh, future weeks. And if you've taken statistics, you know a little bit about this. but. We can see here they used for their statistic a p-value of less than 0.05, which is a good level of statistical significance. So, 
So I think for right now, in this data analysis, before we have um, gone, all we really need right now is to put in here that they how they looked at the data. So they ran statistical tests and they used a p-value of um, 0 0.05 for that one. So let's look at what the findings were. So the findings are usually in the abstract, so that makes it easy for us. We can go right to the abstract and look at the conclusions here. It says Project Dulce, with and without wireless technology, substantially improved glycemic control and diabetes knowledge in high-risk patients with type 2 diabetes in a Mexican family medical unit, suggesting that integrating parallel education, nurse coordination, 3G wireless technology is an effective approach. So what we can do is probably just copy that for now and control C, go down to our little table here, control V, and so we got that in there. And then appraisal uh, worth to practice. So here was when, where we were going to put in the level of evidence. So to find the level of evidence, we're going to go into this table that is in this critical appraisal of the evidence, part one, the step-by-step -step series, and we're going in here and we see systematic review is level one, randomized control is level two. So level of evidence is two. So for this study, um, the our table is now complete. This is all you really have to do for your four to six studies, um, and you'll put those all in the table here. So hopefully this was helpful for you. Don't forget that inside this, um, these step-by-step -step studies, they actually have an example, and they run you through that. So um, take a look at those. There's a few videos in, our, in Unit 6 that are also helpful. Um, I just added another one today, so Unit 6. There's two YouTubes here about the multimedia. About critical appraisal of the literature. OK, so please let me know if you have any questions about how to do this, uh, this assignment this week. Uh, what will be um, you will be using for your final evidence-based presentation. You will can include this table um, as a slide there. Okay. Well, well have a nice weekend. Bye-bye.